Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. So we've got a couple of questions today. And uh, let's begin with the uh, a topic that we've been playing with a lot lately. And that is uh, how do we elongate that time between the where you are just feeling and the story kicks in. So basically the gap between thoughts. Is there a way to, to, to do that? And the first thing I want to do is really distinguish what we're talking about here. And a convenient language I, I, I've used for it is uh, one that, that I get from psychology, which is the difference between a sensation and a perception. And that a sensation is the raw data that is coming in through the senses that is being translated into electrical impulses, shoots along your sensory neural network and goes into your brain where your brain does something with it. And once the, it gets to your brain, it starts to translate those electrical impulses into meaning, even if that meaning is at a pre-conscious level, that is, you're not thinking about it, but it's like, you know, you get the alarm that, oh, smoke, you know, um, you that uh, once it hits that point where meaning is is assigned to those impulses, that's when we call it perception. So if we make that distinction between sensation and perception, and know that it's a non-zero length of time between the sensation and the perception, and depending on how much awareness you can bring into that, where you're bringing awareness, the conscious awareness to a pre-conscious event, we kind of stop action on the, uh, on the event. So that the sensation then is kind of frozen as a sensation for a moment. And we can, prolong that so by bringing awareness back to the feeling sort of refreshing the feeling so you feel you let's say uh, let's just say right now if you were to put your right hand on your right thigh and feel your leg with your with your hand and if you have to move your hand around your leg around to do that that's fine but you want to do that so you're just getting the, the sensations and you're not identifying it, you're not labeling them, you're not naming them, you're just noticing the sensation that is occurring there. And now reverse that and feel your hand with your leg. So you're actually bringing your awareness to your leg, think reaching through your leg and actually feel your hand. And to do this, you may have to, and probably will have to, mute the volume on the hand to do that. So that the, the leg sensations, which has fewer nerve connections in it, that can go into more, uh, be more emphasized. So you're turning up the volume on the leg, and then go back and feel your leg with your hand. So now you're looking through your hand. You're listening to your leg with your touch. And just hang there with that without allowing the story to creep in. So we're consciously putting the governor on the other sensations. We're putting the governor on the thinking process to do this. So we're actually going into that no thought place. Now reverse that and feel your hand with your leg. And just look at your mind and notice that there's clarity there, that you've cleared the noise for the moment. So the way, that's how we practice it. We practice it by consciously feeling throughout the day. So if I reach for my teacup here and I instead of just blindly reaching in and 
taking a slug, I actually feel with my hands. And I'm not telling myself a story about it, I'm just feeling. And doing it allows me to make this part of my, my relationship with the world is that I get to, I get to feel first, then do. And when that, when that, there's a whole bunch of stuff that we've talked about before and we'll continue to talk about that comes with that as a result of the feeling before going into that pre-programmed doing that is, uh, that is, you know, kind of part of our nature and nurture, but we just feel, feel the cup before we tell ourselves a story about what those feelings mean, etc. So that's the, uh, you can do it anytime, any place. Right now, I'm feeling my hair. I'm feeling my eyebrows. You know, it, 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 the more you do it, the more it becomes, uh, it becomes easier to do. And that's because you're creating new neural connections every time you do that. You know, if you consciously try to wiggle your ears right now, and you feel your ears and then stop trying to wiggle them and just feel them, you can feel your ears, which maybe you'll go years without feeling your ears unless somebody gives a good smack. So the, uh, these are the kind of things that, that we can do. So if you feel the floor with your feet, when you're walking down the street, you feel your steps, you feel that contact with the earth every time you do it. Every time you do, there's a, there's a conversation going on and you're creating new neural connections and you're bypassing the, the automatic function of our default mode network of our brain to make a story out of it. So uh, uh, any thoughts or questions on that? Does that, uh, does that answer anybody's questions? You know, that was a really good expl explanation of being in the now. Yes. Thank you. That's exactly what we're looking for there. Anybody else? Let's see. What? Read, read. Yeah. Uh, I tried this a couple of weeks ago to see if it would help with feeling my hand with my leg. And I'd forgotten about it until now, but I'm sitting here drinking a Yeti and they have the Yeti cup thing. And when I try to feel my hand with my leg, I just can't, I can't shut the hand up. And, I, and you explained today why that's the case. Uh, there's just more neurons and no, more uh, sensory uh, inputs from the hand. So it's gonna overwhelm the leg. But if I take this inanimate intermediary, which is the top for my Yeti, and I touch my leg with it, I can feel, my leg can feel this, this, this thing. And so what this does is this familiarized me with what my leg feels when something touches it. And then when I touch it with my hand without it, I, 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 can, I can connect with that feeling of the, in the leg of the hand and detach from the hand a little bit. It's just an odd little thing. And I don't know where that's gonna go. I'm gonna mess with it a little bit and, and, well, that's and see, great. But <clears throat> that, 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 that's perfect because what we're doing here is we're retraining the body to actually feel we're trying, we're awakening vast parts of our nervous system which have been asleep for decades and are overridden by these automatic or habitual impulses so we we get to it and Oh boy, we there's there's uh, a whole bunch of new stuff to play with, and as we're exploring this, you know, there's so many other benefits. This is just the the ground level entry point to this process, but it is as we're going to play with today. It um, this is, takes us to great heights once we start to get that as a uh, you know, as, as a familiar process. Anybody else on that before we go on to other things? Dennis. Yeah, I struggle too with switching, you know, feeling my, feeling my leg with my hand. 
And then I tried, we had, you know, an exercise we did where we move, hold our hand solid and then feel moving it without moving it. I would do that. I would hold my hand on my leg and move my leg without moving it, then move my arm without moving it. And then I was able to change the sensation from my leg to my hand, to the hand to my leg. Great, great. So these are fantastic. And you're all going to figure out little hacks that you can you can you can use to awaken your nervous system to get things riled up again because we as as, as part of the aging process we tend to bulldoze all the little back roads and turn them all into super highways and you know you miss something when you have all those little local routes that you could uh, that used to give you information. So by going back and pretending like you're starting over again with these things, you actually create youthfulness in your, in your nervous system, in your brain and, and then throughout your nervous system. And that has an effect throughout the whole, the whole body mind. You know, Reed said something a few weeks ago that, uh, I, I uh, it really struck it really struck me, and, I, and it kind of it hits the uh, it's really uh, hits the mark. And that is that uh, uh, after nature's primary use with us is to uh, as a procreative device, so that keeping the species going is is its primary objective with 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 humans. And once we've exhausted that function eh, we're kind of on our own and the uh the a lot of the stuff that that got us through our you know the earlier part of our existence is is not there anymore so we have to start getting a little more creative a little more resilient uh more adaptive if we want to hang around a little longer because <clears throat> uh most of us i think you know feel that there's a, a bit more to life than just uh, making babies. So there's a, uh, we, we're having to go beyond the, the pre-programmed impulses and, and hardware that we have and use our creative function to generate a, an environment an internal and external environment that promotes this genetic expression that allows us to do cool stuff. And I, for one, want to continue to do cool stuff for a while. So we, uh, what we're doing here is we're using a, um, an, a very old technology, the Chinese internal martial arts and Qigong to to because it's a um, a proven system it's a system which you know is it, it's done a lot of the work in in uh, on the proving grounds of 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 protecting oneself from harm and so even though most of us are not really looking to get into a fight having that as a uh, as a way of testing this stuff, having the ability to, to get one's body mind in such a way that, yeah, if I wanted to, I could, and you fill in the blank there. So you're exploring these things and it's a way of, of saying, does the punch punch, does the push push? And if it doesn't, then maybe there's a better way. And then we get to go and we get to explore some more stuff. So the, a lot of the things that, that I'm doing have, have to do with, with testing, with empirically verifying whether or not something is a valid idea or not. It can be a valid on, on different levels, but if it, if it does the work that, it's, that it says it will, then we say, okay, this is, this is something that's valid. So that's, let's continue this along this line of exploration. And along the way, we find out all these other really cool things that happen whenever we do this. So the um, uh, moving on to the to the next topic.
which is was it what's that yes yes okay the producer says yes move on move on, move on. um the uh sensing chi so the question came up um is this something that we can do? Can we sense chi directly, or are we just feeling the byproducts of chi? And uh, so the, I have some opinions on that, and uh, happy to listen to anybody else's thoughts. But the, uh, my opinion is that we start by anchoring our perceptions in the with the eye of flesh. That is, we feel into the body, we use feeling as our way of doing it. And like, let's say right now, if you were to just bring your, uh, you point your index finger and reach with that. So you're feeling your fingers and feeling your hand, reach with your elbow and just keep your awareness on your hand and notice sensations begin to arise. There'll be some tingling, pulsing. And so what, what the, the adage is, the E leads the chi and the chi leads the blood. So that is by bringing my conscious awareness to my hand, it leads the chi and the chi leads the blood. So the blood is the first level. That's the level of sensation that, that I'm, attuned to first because that's that oh okay that tingling there that there's something physical happening there and that's at, at a at the eye of flesh level you know and then but if i get familiar enough with that at a very substantial level then something else happens i start to notice that there are attendant qualities beyond just the physical. I start to notice that and what do I, you know, we call that chi, we call that energy or a field. It's a field phenomenon. Just like if you, you know, if you get static electricity and, you know, you, you bring your, your hand along and you, you notice the hairs on your arm stand up. So even though you're not touching the hairs, there is something there and you can feel the electricity. You feel it and its reaction with, with the physicality as well. So it's, it, for me, it's, my opinion is that it's a, a both and phenomenon. That is by anchoring it in the physical, in the substantial, we are then able to progressively attune more and more to the insubstantial qualities by using the eye of spirit. That is a super conscious state. We're then able to see with three eyes, eye of flesh, eye of mind, eye of spirit. And in doing so, we are then able to attune to qualities that are not present in um, not just physical, so I think that that's the uh, the short answer. And I'd like to hear other people's thoughts on this because a, a lot of you have uh, some experience in this area. Jonathan. So the part of it though too, isn't it? That it's a system of polarization that you create, right? If I, if I do what you just said, I'll feel in my right hand, I'll feel something in my left hand start up in parallel with it. So there's, there is, I don't know how, how you would identify that in terms of, not over determining the story of what's going on, but becoming part of a system, feeling the system, or I'd like to hear you reflect back on that. Yeah, well, that's uh, this is where the eye of mind comes in. And it's like, what, what, what's going on here? This is where I figure out a story to fit into this. And that's, uh, and it's like, oh, okay. Well, my story is that they're all part of one circuit. Right. And we, uh, and, and so the, the, it's not like this hand is creating an effect on that hand. It's like, no, no, they're all part of this, right. this system that is my body right. mind. And, right. and they're all part of that circuit. And consequently, I can, by, by holding poles in opposition, 
I can generate, I can create energy. So right. everybody wants to do this right now. You just bring your hands like that. You feel your index fingers, reach with your elbows, and then you're pushing your hands together without moving them. And then kind of just play with that a little bit and you'll notice that there's something there between them. You have generated a field and not unlike magnets. So magnetism, you know, we see its effect on solid objects, but there's also a magnetic field that, you know, is even though you need a form to feel it, you there it, it is happening independent of, not independent of but uh, inter, interdependent with that uh, that thing. It's separate. It's an insubstantial aspect that is different than just the physicality. But the physicality is our one way that we're able to coax the body mind, the nervous system into creating a a story that we can buy into. Read. I have a question I've wanted to ask you about for eh, 25 or 30 years about this since <laughs> I, first, I first started doing Tai Chi with you and I introduced me to the Tai Chi ball. And that is, I found that when I was doing the Tai Chi, a very, very, very real thing. And uh, it's, it's easy to, it, it, people don't have to do Tai Chi to do it. You just have to explain what to do and they, they do it. But I notice if I pull my hands apart a little bit, I can feel a pulling on my skin. In other words, when I put it together, the ball's there, and my hands are glued to it, and I can feel slight pressure pushing out. But if I expand a little bit for just an instant, I can feel a pull, a pulling on my, as if it was a vacuum, as if I was glued to it a little bit. It's not unpleasant. Yes. It's just interesting and very real for me. Yes. And that's exactly what we're talking about here. So we pulls in opposition going together, pulls in opposition pulling apart. You know, and they're both creating a field and they're both creating, you know, chi. So you're either way, it's going, you know, you're creating that and your, your nervous system is trying valiantly to try to put labels on this <laughs> that so that it can, you know, it can include this into your experiential model so that you can say you can you know, you can talk to yourself about this stuff, but it's a, uh, uh, but that's very much it. So yes, what you're, that, that phenomenon, I, I believe most of us have, have observed that because, and that is very much what happens, you know, the, in the classics, they talk about first you learn to feel, that is you, you approach it from, from that eye of flesh, and then you learn to control energy. And that's that next step where you're learning to, to control the energy. And then the third step is spiritual illumination. And that was the, uh, that's the approach. What I've tried to do is to collapse those three together so that the, it's not, it's not a, uh, a long runway to get to the, uh, to get to that, but you actually, it's more like shifting into warp drive and you're, you're, you're there, you're, you you poof, you know, you, you've shifted to that other place. And uh, the, the game then becomes being able to incorporate that expanded awareness, that expanded ability into holding my teacup so that it's not a big deal that it's not this wild something other, it's life. It's chop wood, carry water at that point. And that's my, uh, my thinking on that. Anybody else? Uh, Nick. Well, two things. One, first, I like one of the images that works really well for me when I'm playing with that sense of the uh, and that that force that energy that, that field is the image of pulling taffy um and and that when, when you're separating that drawing out and and 
it's very, uh, it's really visceral. Yeah, yeah, in that way. But uh, what I was going to say, uh, maybe this relates to what Jonathan was talking about is that, you know, your answer, it's all one system, which is right, but we're not always aware of the whole system. And playing with the bits and pieces is what allows us to eventually put together our perception of the whole system. Right. Yes. So at first you're only able, you know, it's like this, I feel this. And then, oh, wow, there's something else going on over here. Oh, yeah. You know, but it's it's practice. That's what you say. And, and, and that really is what strengthens it and makes it more instantaneous. Right. And it's endless, too. Yeah. It, 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 it's an infinite game. It's, it's <laughs> there is no, you know, ultimate winner on uh, of that game. It just it just. The purpose of that game is to keep the game going. So, Keith. Uh, I was really trying to like not talk tonight because <laughs> I talk too much. <laughs> but Rick said something about what this does and to get you to the point of just trying to figure stuff out. I mean, I, I'm only nine months in maybe you know and you talk about being in the deep end of the pool i gotta tell you ricky dog i mean it's some freaky shit that you introduce to us every week and these guys that are attuned to this may think it's just like regular and dipply dap but i gotta tell you you know it's a it's a lot different than working in the salt mines. Uh, agreed, Keith. Uh, it's a moving train. Uh, I'm glad you're keeping up. <laughs> uh, Dennis, you got something? Yeah. Uh, well, I just started wearing hearing aids a couple of years ago. And I've been losing my hearing. It's been all right. I noticed that in my late 40s, I couldn't hear on the telephone in one ear as much. And it's been a long, slow, gradual thing, losing my hearing. So you don't notice it because it's, you know, it's it it's, it it, blend, it goes in with the background. And a few years ago, I I started noticing when I'd be doing qi kung, I'd get a, a buzzing in my ears, kind of like when you yawn, that noise you get. And I asked my teachers, Does anybody ever say they hear qi? And he gave me kind of a funny look. And well, it turned out I was developing tinnitus. And what tinnitus is is as you're as you lose your hearing, and you get those little follicles in your ear that fall off over age, usually damage to loud noise or, or, you know, that. And what your brain, what it is, is that your brain cranks up the software, turns up the volumes, and you start hearing the blood rushing in your ear. So I think as I do the chi, I can hear the, as I do the, it's an actual more blood going through my ear. Like when we're doing that, pushing our hands, I can hear that noise. Like it sounds almost like I'm yawning. So there is a physical thing going on in your body when you when you when you do this stuff. Cool, that's an excellent point there, Dennis. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Um, last week I talked about an idea I got as thinking about a triangle that. Basically, it's a triangle of wholeness and wholeness as a, not just a um, uh, getting all your parts together, but there's also a psychological quality to wholeness where you're, you're in, in, in a state of wholeness, you're unaware of the parts, you're just, you're just aware. And so the, um, but in the, in wholeness, this is, what we need to express jin with and jin being where we're using the body to express energy and it's directed by our conscious mind and so we need to be in that state of wholeness in order to be able to do that this is where i talk about super consciousness that's his body mind integration so that triangle is three three components that make that happen that we have a um, coherence which means that 
the parts are together. Your your things are functioning at a high level of organization, so that whatever it is that you're talking about is moving very efficiently. It's is operating. So, like say you've got a new car and and everything is just working perfectly, and you contrast that to you know your old junker that. You know, you had for 30, you know, been around for 30 years and and things are just kind of held together with duct tape. And the you can you know that there are rattles and and things, you know, shakes and things like that that are in part of that that old clunker that are not there in the new car. And so the new car is highly coherent. That is, it's all the parts are working together at a very high level of functioning. And on an energetic level. We turn the ignition and the everything comes to life. So it's going, we've taken it to a high level of coherence so that the car is now functioning and all the parts are functioning. The radio works and the wipers and, and the engine and the brakes and the steering, it works. And you turn the ignition off and the coherence oof, drops down to a very low level and the steering wheel no is locks up. You're, you know, nothing. Nothing's happened, doesn't move out of the driveway. So what we're looking for here is getting our body mind to a heightened state of coherence so that things are functioning smoothly and there's a minimum amount of noise in the system. So that's that's that one corner of the of the triangle. A and that's kind of a substantial one in a, in a sense that it's we're talking about the stuff working together, and then on a more insubstantial level we have presence, and presence, as I think of it, and again I'm I'm open to other people's ideas of that, but particularly as pertains to the exploration that we are all involved in with this this exercise here. Presence is the degree to which you can integrate your body and mind. So that is, you get your body and mind together in space and time. That is, you get your, you're able to be here now. You know, that in the famous Ram Das quote, you know, that be here now. So if you are something is being there has to be some form that is located in time and space in order to have presence so but the other side of presence is is the one where when you are in the present moment as someone said earlier that's now that is that is where you are embracing the eternal now and the closer you can get to that which we can approach but never actually achieve is that we're getting closer and closer to clearing out the mental noise that takes us out of the present moment so when we're in our heavily in our our thoughts we are always in the out of now we're always in the past where we are, it takes time for us to formulate a thought and bring it back into the nervous system and, and actually do something. So with our body as our, our point of reference, getting the mind and the body together is presence. And it's never an absolute, it's always a degree. How much? How much are you present? And the more present you can be, the more you, the better you are able to function. And it is a direct corollary to that coherence idea. So we're back to getting body and mind integrated. So we have this presence, we have coherence. And presence is a psychological thing too. It's like a, an awareness of, oh, here I am. And there's, there's a, uh, an awareness of being here now. And the two, the, the, the other point on the triangle that ties them together is feeling. Because feeling is the language of the body mind. So if our objective is to get 
the body and mind integrated, integrating the eye of flesh and the eye of mind so as to open the eye of spirit, which is that super conscious state, which is that state where we are, we know without thinking, then we use, we use feeling as the, as our initial way in, because it connects the whole system up. And, you know, then we get into, you know, the nuts and bolts of it, you know, I talked about in, in Western Gate, we're about talking about the connective tissue system and how things run through that, which is directly related to the feeling idea, even though we're not feeling the connective tissue system directly, that is the channel, the insubstantial channel that these impulses are running along. So we're getting these things together. So we're going to do a little, little work with that. And because uh, getting these three together, we create the state of wholeness, but wholeness as we express ourselves physically in a state of wholeness, we are bringing chi through the body and, and making stuff happen. So it's directing attention. So I think last week I mentioned that, that the derivation of, of, of Jin is a combination of Qi and Li. Li is, is, is physical strength and Qi is the energy. So it's you know, one crude way of saying it would, be, it would be finding the most efficient way to use your strength. But as you refine it, you use less and less strength to create more and more power. And that's, that's the direction we're heading because that is, this is kind of the way we cheat nature. This is the way we get to, we get to keep the game going and uh, by actually creating energy, we're tapping into the big G and we're, we're moving more effortlessly and efficiently through the world so that, that there are fewer insults to the form that it has to go through the process of repairing and, and all that crap. So we like to avoid that as much as possible. And also the, the deterioration. We talked a few weeks ago about, about epigenetic noise. That is the, the noise that uh, from the internal and external environments that affect the way your genes are expressed. So if we can create less epigenetic noise, i.e. more coherence, then there is less entropy in the system that things are not falling apart. The wheels are not coming off the cart quite as fast. So that's the, uh, that's the game there. And the, along the way, if you get to become a badass martial artist, cool, that's good too. So uh, why don't you stand up and let's do a little something. So first we're going to a Wu Ji posture. That is, we're going to empty out and just give yourself permission to be where you are, doing what you're doing, and letting everything else go. So the Wu Ji is the nothingness. The we're just eliminating all the noise and just allowing us to be. Now feel the ball of your right foot, set your right knee spiral down to the left. You're loading up the right claw, loading up the right leg, emptying out the left and then turn to the right. So even more emptying out the left, pick up your left heel and step out by the hip width. So your feet are now parallel. And then feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the right and turn back to center. So first we're gonna set, establish our three pillars because this is, this enables us to get into a super conscious state. It allows us to plug into the big chi. 
It establishes a heightened state of coherence. And it also gets rid of some of the kinks in the hose. So feel the balls of both feet. Press down with your toes and feel, feel the contact your toes are making with the floor. So you're really feeling through your feet, feeling into the earth and allowing the earth chi to rise through the balls of your feet, through the, the bubbling well points and up into your body. We're plugging into the big G now. Reach for the crown of your head. Tuck in the chin and open the jade pillow gate at the base of the skull. I like to keep the tip of the tongue on the roof of my mouth when I'm not talking. This helps to, to provide continuity of the great ch central channel. Relax your lower back and allow your sacrum to drop, your coccyx, flattening out your lower lumbar area. Continue to feel the balls of your feet. There's a tendency to want to shift back into your heels. We want a dynamic posture here. Reach with the clavicular notch so that your chest and shoulders open up. Reach with your elbows, opening the shoulder joints, point with your index fingers and establish your energetic coherence. And feel into your hands and notice the sensations there. Feel the tingling and pulsing. Also notice that there is something else there, more of a field phenomenon. Spiral down to the left, release your quad, your hip joints, spiral down to the right, back to center. So we're unkinking the hose, unkinking the shoulders. Your hands are, palms are facing backward, your elbows are reaching out slightly, your arms are slightly rounded. Now, bow forward slightly, releasing the claw on both sides. So you're just bowing slightly. And this is a yin move. It releases, it consolidates, and then we go to a yang expression. You feel the fingers. You reach with your wrists, reach with your elbows very slowly bring your hands up, wrists first. So notice that the elbows are reaching out to your, you're not pulling with your shoulders. You've disconnected the shoulders. So you're reaching with the wrists. Fingers are relaxed. Now reach out with the fingers, extend that. The 
yourself sinking into the earth and reaching out with the fingers, reaching up with the crown of your head. So we're reaching out with the elbows. So feel those expansions happening. So we're in a very young position right now. So there's the energy is expansive. So now we're going to feel the balls of the feet, set the knees, bow forward slightly and reach down with the elbows. Bend your wrists. Fingers are up now. Reach now with your wrists. So this is a yin energy. So the energy is consolidating. It's coming in. Reach down with the fingers. And straighten up. And just feel into your body and just feel the the whole system connecting up. Bring your awareness to your feet now. Now bring it to the top of your head. Bring your awareness to your elbows. Bring it to the palms of your hands. Bring it to your knees. forward, yin, and as you straighten up, reach with the elbows, feel the shoulders opening, reach with the wrists. We're going to go for a bigger young expansion now. We're going to reach out the wrists. Now reaching with the fingers. Feel the space between your shoulder blades opening. Feel the connection. Finger arms together rounded. And feel that energy now, that field being contained within that rounded structure. So we're having, we're enclosing this like we're hugging a big balloon. Now at the same time, feel your arms reaching out, expanding outward. So we're doing both. We're pressing in and reaching out at the same time. Just feel that. We'll rotate, palms down. And just notice the shift in the energy when you did that. Notice how that felt different. by changing that position. Reach down with the elbows. Reach down with the wrists. Down with the hands. The fingers. Feel it feels different. This is a yin energy. Notice that both are full, the yang and the yin. They have different qualities, but both are very full, very powerful. So it has a lot to do with the direction of the energy, the expression of the jin. Feel the balls, set the knees, bow forward slightly, and reach with your elbows, your wrists. Opening, expanding, 
allow the energy rising through your body to do the expanding for you. Feel yourself opening kind of like a, like a flower. Just feel that reaching out. Feel that young expansion where the yin chi rising from your feet comes up and expresses itself as yang. Now feel the balls set the knees, bow forward, reach down with your elbows, your wrists. Hands come down. I just feel into that. Now feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, loading up the right leg, step in with your left, turn back to center. Take a deep breath, hands come up. And as you press down, disappear the chi, throw it away. Dissolve into the emptiness. We're right, when I say that, it means that we're identifying with something that's even less substantial than the energy, what you could call spirit. Shen. Grab a seat. We just have a couple minutes. Let's uh, how'd that go? That was badass. I felt like a junior wizard because <laughs> that fucking ball I had. All right, get your, get your junior wizard badge. Rick. I just want to clarify something. That wasn't badass. That was good ass. That was <laughs> great ass. Okay? We okay, don't want to be bad. Ass. <laughs> we want to be good. We want to be great. And that's what that was. That was pretty cool. Good. Thank you. Good. Anybody else? Scott. Yeah, the way you um, described that at the very end there about um, it being less substantial, you know, feeling into the less substantial the spirit that that really helped because when you said that I could really like almost feel a light kind of thing. It was you know no really no words but beautiful, right? So going back to that earlier question, to perceive chi in and of itself, you have to be in a form that is less substantial than the chi. You know, so that's that's you have to identify with with the spiritual side uh, to which is moving toward you know maximum insubstantiality to be able to identify something as insubstantial as chi. So it's uh, uh, anybody else, Valerie. Mm -hmm. I remember I shared uh, a meditation at uh, Tai Chi Alchemy one time, and I had asked, you know, brought everybody back and, and asked them what they had experienced. And you laughed and you said, after that, you expect us to talk or something very <laughs> similar to that. That's exactly what I feel right now. It's, um, and yes, I think if you, this is recorded. So grab a hold of what you said on disappearing the chi, because I always have a problem of feeling, of letting that go, right? Mm -hmm. But what you said tonight, like Scott said, the light bulb went off and it's like, mm. yeah, okay. I understand that I'm in that very insubstantial place and it made more sense to me. 
um, I'm always get there, but it's, it's, did I let it go? You know, there was, all, there's always been that question. And now I know, yes, I was doing it, but something wasn't quite connecting. So what, how you said it tonight um, was very pertinent. It was um, very well put. So I appreciate that. Wonderful. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Cool. So that, that that's true. You know, the, we can ide identify ourselves as form at whatever level, as our thoughts, as our body, as our, you know, energy, as spirit, you know, or beyond. It's 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 a question of, you know, what what our tolerance is of the insubstantial, and can we move easily between those realms to be able to function as human? I think that's, for me, that's the key is being able to, to be able to, to, to do all that. Cool, anybody else? Peter. You're, you're on mute, Peter. I like the triangle, the three vertices of coherence and uh, presence and feeling, and then putting that together with the three in your book, in one of your books, the three conditions for meeting, coherence, presence, and relating. There's a lot of food for thought thinking of those three threes, those two Great. threes. Two threes, good. There'll be more. <laughs> Always three. Like, you gotta select your threes. <laughs> yeah good okay kids it's been wonderful thank you so much a lot of fun love you maria. thank you maria thank you everybody else hey so when rick when are we gonna see maria like demonstrate some of her stuff because you have to request it at the beginning <laughs>